There are a couple things I hate as a film buff, as a film critic, as a film YouTuber, talky man, and some of those things include Netflix, Netflix originals, lowbrow source material starring a young and talented actor that should be doing better things, and lazy, predictable, uncharming, forgettable, green screen heavy, bordery, manufactured eyesores. And that's exactly what I thought Damsel was going to be. I was not looking forward to this movie, I knew quite literally nothing about it except that the poster was terrible. The title sounded dumb. Netflix have a pretty bad track record for these kinds of things, and Millie Bobby Brown, though talented, had yet to start in a project that convinced me of her leading potential. So going into Damsel, I was reluctant, not to mention reading all of the negative reviews for it and seeing every video apparently calling it atrocious and boring. It was just a doomed experience. Until I saw it. Now the first thing I'd like to point out is something I feel like I haven't seen many people mention yet, but the scenery. So this is a fantasy film in the 2020s. There is not a massive shortage of those, but the difference is this movie looks absolutely gorgeous, at least in the first half. There's this great mix of practical sets, real locations and CGI elements. The VFX work so well in these moments because the CGI isn't there to build the scenery. It isn't a tool being used for the foundations of the film's aesthetic, it's there to season and flavour what's already there. Which is how it's best used in my opinion. It's why a film like this can cost a third of what something like No Way Home does and look infinitely better. The problems with the cinematography start start to leak through as soon as we enter the cave system in the mountain during the second act of the film. And what do you know, this is where they started relying more on the green screen elements, but for all the outside sequences they chose so many beautiful shooting locations, the majority of them being in Portugal. And I think those places make for a great fantasy world, because nothing makes people believe in the magic of a fictional place more than seeing a real place that feels fictional. It's exactly why New Zealand works for Lord of the Rings, and these places in Portugal just feel magical. Just look at these. I'm in awe of seeing these locations. And the aid of these environments is that it forces a bright and bold colour palette, which is so nice in a world of mainstream streaming movies and TV being so washed out and bland visually. And that works its way all the way down to the costume design, which is stunning. The details in the crowns and dresses general costuming and hairstyling is a very pretty and clearly thought about aspect of the movie. It's sad the latter half of the movie loses a lot of this personality, but I will say a lot of the cave aspects are cool in their own right and the dragon design itself is incredible. It's very unique and super impressive, very high quality CG work too. And I think the aesthetic goes hand in hand with a lot of very nice shots that are more than just look at this pretty thing. Like, I love this one shot of the mountain over the city in the first night of the kingdom. It just drives home the towering presence of the mountain and its implications in the story. Like I said, I knew nothing about the film, nothing about its premise or characters or anything, so going in completely blind, this visual storytelling is so preferable to the idea of just expositing information at the audience using character dialogue. There's this cool shot of this flock of birds on fire lighting up this dark and dingy cave, this one shot nearing the end where the dragon's fury causes him to light up the mountain which gives us this kind of Mordor feeling which I think is very powerful, which is down to the writing of the dragon itself and how it marries with the visuals. They hardly show the dragon for the majority of the movie, they really build the suspense and aura of the creature. It's a good way to save money by not having to render this entire thing for every shot but also helps the audience buy into the dragon's presence and its weight in the stakes. You feel the effects of its existence through the fear of the characters you follow and it's just a very effective way to build an antagonist. I love this one moment of the dragon's mere presence making this ice melt, its breath being so hot that its exhale thaws out pure ice. And the fact that its fire is much more than fire, it behaves like lava almost, it turns liquid as it hits solid surfaces, it makes it so much more intimidating than regular fire. It's an interesting conceptual choice, the only thing I don't really love with the writing here is that the dragon has like wall hacks, it finds Elodie not 
matter where she is. But you can kind of fantasy creature senses explain that away. The writing otherwise is pretty strong. Nothing groundbreaking, but it does have a few interesting choices that I think are being fairly underrated, like the stepmother not being awful. It would have been all too easy to make the stepmother in the fantasy story evil and hateful. Instead, she's actually caring and the movie benefits a lot from it, despite it being the more difficult avenue to take the character. And with this choice, they unlock so many opportunities that other fantasy films don't get to have, like the fact the father seemingly knows what fate he's giving his daughter, whilst the stepmother seems to actually care and give warning to Elodie over. She's not aware of the situation, but she knows something is wrong, so she warns her. And they have this conversation, which I think is very important to Elodie's character because it demonstrates to us that she isn't a one-track minded individual. There's loads of hints to that before this, but the fact that she isn't instantly dismissive of the idea that the royals are bad people and this wedding is a scheme of some kind tells us a lot of her intelligence and respect for her stepmother's judgement and the way they take this character into a subversive place allows us to have these character moments for our protagonist. It isn't subversion just for the sake of subverting every trope that we know in fantasy, it plays a part in the story. And with Elodie's intelligence being a key aspect of the story, small moments like this build a good and solid character to follow. So later on when she uses her resourcefulness to repurpose her necklace to capture fire instead of just simply making a torch, or the same with the slugs, using the old crown as a climbing instrument, using armour to makeshift a booby trap, it's just charming bits of character moments where we see her intelligence rather than get told constantly that it exists. And in the end, her resourcefulness is what wins her the day and her compassion, which is a strong character trait. Her immediate reaction to all animals is to help, so these little moments work towards making that final resolution satisfying. Also, because I didn't know anything, I was predicting she'd be some kind of sacrifice, but when it gets revealed, I was so absolutely hooked. I would like you to be a sacrifice. Rarakvarus? I think the story takes a lot of influence from Arthurian legends, but it weirdly reminds me a lot of the Black Phone from 2022. The idea of Elodie getting into this cave where previous brides have drawn a map and are helping future brides escape is very reminiscent of the Black Phone, and I thought that was pretty cool. And it's just a way to build out the world in a fun and visual way, and this film does build a very interesting world, one that's rich with potential. I love these little slugs that glow and can heal wounds, and it's cool how we see that she's good at labyrinths and mazes, so when she sees the map of this cave system, it's within her nature to figure it out. And this ability is even given a reason to exist. I mentioned before that her father seems to know exactly what's going to happen to Elodie and he doesn't care because he needs to help his people, which I also think is a great story choice, the idea of a bad father but good leader. Then of course he has a change of heart and dies trying to save his daughter. He gets a very minor redemption arc which is admirable to even attempt. I also like the idea of her escaping and having to go back. It shows us her growth and then we get to see her redo this journey she's been on and how much she's improved. And I do love this one sequence of her figuring out the cave system. It's like me on my first night on Minecraft after mining for the first six hours. And the film gets pretty dark at times. There's more blood than I expected to see. It has a gorgeous score. I mean, just listen to this. The cast is incredible also, Ray Winstone, Angela Bassett, Robin Wright, even Nick Robinson who's a pretty underrated actor contemporarily, but of course the star of the show is Millie Bobby Brown who I think has perfect charisma and sells this character well who could easily be bland and forgettable, which granted many people claim she is but I disagree, she's a wonderful actor and I hope to see her in more things that test her range. So yeah, this film is super corny, it's predictable, there's plot holes and silly nitpicks I could draw for, but I think it has some cool ideas, and had this film released in the 2010s, I think there'd be a whole young adult fiction damsel trilogy by now, and I honestly kind of wish we do get more of this world anyway. I think given the right writers and directors, it has a lot of potential. I'm looking at you, David Lowry. It was directed by Juan Carlos Fersnadillo, director of 28 Weeks Later, so you know it has some juice, and yes, if 
falls apart slightly in the third act, but as someone who was expecting genuine shite, I think this overall works very well and it's a breezy good time that I think is being treated pretty harshly and unfairly. But that's just me. What do you think? Have you seen Damsel? If so, what did you think? If not, will you? And whether it's a young adult fiction Netflix original or not, as always, Keep watching movies.